Okay, this is uh, Mr. Weideman here to help you with your homework on uh, UT Quest Full Parabola Projectile Motion. Uh, this is a problem that always seems to give students a hard time. Uh, first thing you need to recognize is this is a full parabola problem. And uh, this is the information that you're given. And I do believe on this one they use 9.8 instead of 9.81 for their value of g and does that matter yes it does all right we need to know uh, pay attention and carry things to four decimal places probably the first thing that messes students up is this very first piece of information v initial kilometers per second if you do not change that to meters per second you will not be in compatible units with your value of G, and things won't work. All right, from here, once you do this, um, don't let the size of the numbers freak you out, and you're going to problem solve the same way you normally do. One of our best strategies is to uh, find time, time of flight, and there's a number of different ways to do it. Before we get to that, because I know this is a full parabola problem in two dimensions, the first thing I have to do is I have to break up initial velocity into components. This is always your first move in full parabola problems. Again, the numbers are pretty large. Uh, I need to put units on these guys. These guys are in meters per second. Very important. Okay, continuing on, now that I got this broken into components, this is probably one of the best ways that we can find time. I derived this little equation for you in class. All right, remember, we have to be in components, so we have to make sure that everything we put in this equation is going to be in the same dimension, in this case, the y dimension. Now, when I go and substitute values into here, Notice what happens. V final in the y is the negative of V initial in the y. All right, remember that from your notes on full parabola problems. This allows me to back calculate time very easily. Now, if I wanted to, I could have said V final in the y was 0. V initial in the y is 1461.13 minus 9.8. And then that t that we could uh, compute would be the t half, t to the apex. And that would work so long as I doubled it because uh, this problem wants to know the total distance in the x direction that the projectile flew. All right, but if I leave it like this, then that t that I compute with these numbers shown here is going to give me my total time of flight. So uh, it allows me to use that value then directly into my uh, range or distance in the x equation. I can just merely substitute that in. Think on this problem, 298.19 seconds. And here's another big tripping point. Okay, when we do all this, we're unit compatible, but my answer is in meters. If you look carefully, UT Quest says that we want our answer in kilometers. So make sure you move your decimal place um, three places to the left, and then you'll be good to go.